Good morning. That had the same energy that I do. You guys are, good morning. <laughs> Let's try again. Good morning. good morning. That's better. All right. Well, I'm glad you're all here today. I welcome the folks that are joining us from their homes or cars or wherever they happen to be today. We gather today. Um, it's a little rainy outside, but the sun still shines. Even though we can't see it, the clouds will clear and life will continue. And so we have a lot to be grateful for. The color red on the banner and the, the pride flag represents life and living. And each of us are here. So we have life to celebrate. And we have things that have happened in our lives this last week that have brought us joy, that have made that life worth living. And so today, as we begin our time of worship and listen to the prelude, I invite you to think about one thing that has happened this week that made you go, ah, I am so glad I am alive and I got to see that or experience that. So focus on that one thing that makes you glad to be alive as we listen to the prelude today. come from loving homes and others from broken parents. Some of us come searching and asking questions. Some of us come grateful and feeling blessed. Some of us come weeping yet clinging to hope. Some of us come laughing and full of joy. Some of us come seeking peace and renewal. Some of us come fearful of being loved. 
some of us come bold enough to love and be loved fully. Some of us gather encountering the holy. Some open ourselves to the divine presence to worship God. Wherever you come from, whatever you are seeking, you are welcome here. Good morning. Please join me in prayer. Creator God, we belong to you and know that each person is of infinite worth to you. You delight in all colors, shapes, and sizes. You abide in love that holds us together as, you, as your one body. Thank you, God, for allowing us to know these truths. Strengthen us this day to love like you love and celebrate the colors of hope that shine within all of us. Amen. Please rise if you are able as we sing The Church Where Love Lives. We will sing with the video. The church where love lives is a safe place for all where we gather in wonder to remember God's call to embody God's vision of kindness and care with each song that we sing with each protest and prayer on this sacred foundation of faith and of trust we are building a world that is gentle and just we rejoice and repent of the praise and forgive and we welcome all people to the church where love lives the church where love lives draws the stranger inside making neighbors of strangers no neighbor denied till there's heaven on earth and god's will has been done till the whole of creation is restored to its home on this sacred foundation of faith and of trust we are building a world that is gentle and just we rejoice and repent of a praise and forgive and we welcome all people to the church where love lives the church where love lives is preparing a feast for the pained and rejected for the lost and the least for the deeply afraid for the truly ashamed come and sit at our table love has called you by name sacred foundation of faith and of trust we are building a world that is gentle and just we rejoice and repent offer praise and forgive and we welcome all people to the church where love lives Amen. Please be seated. I invite the kiddos to come forward. 
or they can join from where they want, where they're at, whatever it works for them. <clears throat> we'll hang out down here today, Key. Did you know there are some people that can't see colors? Color blindness. To me, that would be one of the hardest things. I love colors. I love all colors. When Mark and I got married, he only knew that there were eight colors, just the basic crayon box. So I had to teach him that there were more colors, you know, like there's yellow green and green yellow, which are different things. All right, so we have all the colors. If you look around, there's all kinds of colors. So what are some things that are the color red? Um, roses. roses, good. Yeah. Apples. What are some things that are red? Do you own anything red? Strawberries. Mmm, good one, good one. Cherries, yum. Yeah, red cherries? Yeah, they're delicious. Hi, Ellie. Do you see she's a butterfly today? Put your arms up. So she, will you show Key your... Isn't that amazing? So cute. <clears throat> All right, so what are some other things that are red? Can you think of anything else that's red? What's something red, Ellie? Can you think of something red? Do you have anything red at home? A red door. A red door, right. Yeah. Red exit sign, good. Fire, truck. Fire trucks. A red ball. What was the other one? Jelly beans. Jelly, ooh, red jelly beans, red hots. Red Cardinals. Cardinals. Suzanne's hat. <laughs> cars, red cars and red cards, playing cards, Uno cards. Which ones? My banked balance. <laughs> Watermelon, fire trucks, so many red hair. things. Hair, that's right, red hair. Blood, red blood, yes. So sometimes we think that a color ha comes with a feeling. Is there a feeling that you think of when you see the, re the color red? Same again? Happy. Happy. Love. Energy. Energy. Anger. Excited. So we, everybody was thinking of different things that they know that are red. And some very different understandings of what the color red can make us feel. Were any of us wrong? No. No. All of these different red things are wonderful. And we can see the color red and we can feel different things. So I might see red and think emergency because I think of fire trucks. But I also might see red and think of love because I think of the red at Christmas or the heart at Valentine's Day. So thinking different things about what it means doesn't make it wrong. We're made to be different. God made us unique. You and I look very different, but we're still both people. You and I might see the red and think different things or think of different things. But because God created us all different, that makes it even better. Because we can talk about one day maybe why you think red means love and why I think red means excitement. And we might always still hold the same opinion, and that's okay. We can be different because that's how God created us. It's learning to talk about the ways that we feel that are different that makes the world a better place. And that's what God wants us to do. God created us to be different, not to divide us, but to learn to appreciate the differences in other people. So it takes work, but it's what God calls us to. Are you going to flap your wings when we're done? Show everybody your wings. All right, let's have a quick prayer, then you can flap your wings. Dear God, Thank you for all the colors, especially for the color red. Thank you for making our world in all the colors of the rainbow. Help us appreciate all of the ways make our, make our differences 
make a better world. Amen. Thanks for coming up. You want to stand up and show everybody your wings? Yeah, everybody wants to see them. Can you stand up and show them? And put your wings up. Oh, can you yeah. put your hood up so they get the full effect? Okay, put your arms out. Yay! <laughs> All right, you can flutter your way back to your seat now. Thanks for coming up today. <laughs> My throat is especially scratchy today, so please forgive me if I need to take a break in the middle of the sermon to get a drink of water. Um, so today we're reading from 1 John. And 1 John, I'm going to grab my water while I'm talking. 1 John um, is one of the letters that was written for the faith community that the gospel of John was written for. So each of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, those, those were each written by a different author and then written and gathering information for a specific faith community. So the, the epistle or the letter to 1 John was believed to have been written for the church that the Gospel of John was written for. So if we were to read all of the Gospel of John and then read the first epistle or the first, I think, how about other three or four um, books of John, epistles, we would begin to see how the gospel is understood, how Jesus' life and teachings are understood by John, and then how the church that, they, that that was written for is meant to take what they hear in God's gospel and actually kind of put wheels on it, put it into practice. What does that mean for living in community? So today we're going to read 1 John Chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. And the reason that the world does not know us is that we did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all <clears throat> who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. <clears throat> What is, they're often referred to as the elder, so the elder of the church. As the elder is writing, two times in this section that we have read, they specifically tell the listeners, so the people of this faith community, that they are children of God. And he finishes this very short little section that we read by calling them little children. <clears throat> now, children are precious, right? Whether they are children that are related to us by blood or because they are chosen family or part of our faith community, it is such a joy to see a little baby and to see them grow, to watch them learn new things. I'm fortunate enough that I have several friends who have babies right now. And we're friends on Facebook, and so I get to see posts on a regular basis that show these little ones discovering the world. And I get to watch as these tiny little human beings learn. So in the, la <clears throat> in the last week, I have been able to enjoy posts about a little boy who has learned to clap, 
Another little baby who can now climb onto the couch, much to his parents' chagrin. <clears throat> and another one who now can blow raspberries on daddy's arm. And they have a video of it, and they are all laughing so hard that the dad has tears running down his face. These are wonderful things that we get to watch as children are growing. And there's just absolutely nothing like the sound of a baby's laughter or seeing a baby take their very first steps and watching them go through all of the myriad of discoveries that they go through as they grow. Every day, children discover new things about themselves and about their world. And it's a pure pleasure to watch as their eyes light up as they figure out what those things are on the end of their arms and how can watch as they move and watch as they grasp. Have you ever seen a baby the first time they understand what fingers are and they grab something? It's just a, a miracle to them. Or they, they learn how to um, blow kisses. Okay, if you're a grandparent, you remember the first time that your child or your grandchild blew a kiss to you? heart melts these are all amazing things that a child learns and discovers about themselves it's a child's job if we can call it a job to play games and listen to stories and acquire skills to learn to create relationships to attend to instructions it's their job to investigate the natural world and to gain faith, to believe, and to question. And there's no age where learning and discovery end. They simply change as we grow up. We figure out what our hands are for and how these work, and we see how many things we can get our fingers into that we're not supposed to. And then we discover and we learn. Okay, when mom says hot, don't touch it. And now we've learned a lesson. We've learned how our body works. We've learned how our, our senses work. We learned how our fingers we learn. We learned that there are rules that help us keep us safe. All of these things. Children learn through every single experience. They might even discover that they are good at art. They might discover that they can ride a bike. They might discover new music, different from what mom and dad listen to. They might learn to kick a ball or throw a ball. That's the nature of life. To grow and to learn. To discover and to encounter. But for some, what they discover about themselves can be hard to understand. Some discover that they need glasses because without corrective lenses, things are blurry. Some discover that they need an inhaler because if they don't have an inhaler and they go for a run, they can't breathe. Some discover that their minds wander when they're trying to concentrate and they need medication to help them focus. And some discover that their growing interests in other people are judged to be wrong by others. Some are told that part of them is sinful, even though it is something that they cannot change, just like they cannot change their eye color, it is part of who they are. And that is the experience that Nadia Tavera had as she was growing up in Mexico City. She attended church with her family from the time that she was four years old and she heard that homosexuality was wrong. She writes in the second chapter of the book that we are studying right now and discussing Colors of Hope. She writes, I couldn't accept that God loved me because I'm gay. They were the worst years of my life if it could be called a life. I could not reconcile my faith and my sexual orientation Feeling rejected by God caused deep wounds in my being. As I said, in the pride flag, red represents life. Like the blood that flows through our veins, 
Red flows through the rainbow, vivid and vibrant. Our lives, which are created and sustained by God, are meant to be vivid and vibrant. We are meant to live lives of discovery and joy. But if one of the things that is part of our God-given identity is viewed as a sin, the damage can be deep and lasting. Nadia Taveras says, My life was dominated by the struggle of wanting to please God and be myself. The negative voices that shouted I was not a beloved child of God were the only voices I heard. And so she tried to act straight. And all she felt was self-loathing. She finally found her way to La Comunidad Cristiano de Esperanza, the Christian community of hope and open and affirming church in Mexico City. And there she heard from Pastor Ricardo, you don't have to do anything or stop doing something to be loved by God. You don't have to do anything or stop doing something to be loved by God. Nadia was able to feel truly alive again as she allowed those words to seep into her heart and her soul and the love of God set her free from shame and guilt and she was able to truly live again. And every day she repeats a mantra to help her keep God's love first and foremost in her life. She says, I accept myself as I am and forgive myself for all the times that I couldn't bear to be me. Nadia learned to live because she accepted and embraced that she is a beloved child of God. By God's love, we are all no longer strangers. We are no longer orphans lost in the cosmos and the brokenness of our world. We no longer live without hope or direction. We are loved. We are claimed by God and defined as nothing less than God's children. And if we embrace that reality, the reality that we are children of God, then our job becomes to work together as extended and connected beings to pursue, to pursue goodness and a shared life with all people. And perhaps the best way to do that is to be children again. To accept what we read in 1 John, that we are not yet complete. Perhaps like children, we need to play and discover and learn and grow as we live into the kind of community that Jesus' teachings create. As children, let us discover that wiggly energy that will not let us sit still and instead let us do something. Let us strive to live into the promise of today's scripture and to although be imperfect, to always do something to follow Jesus' example. Let's throw out old ideas that harm God's children and instead discover the all-encompassing love of God. Let's cling to the truth that all people are children of God. Let's celebrate the hope that God is working in us and through us to share love with the world. Live with purpose. Share your joy. And let the vivid and vibrant colors of hope throw, flow through you and into the world, proclaiming God's love for all God's children. Let us pray. 
<clears throat> creator of life, we thank you for the beautiful diversity of our world. We thank you for the colors and textures and sounds and smells that fill our days with wonder. Thank you for the unique way that you have created each of us, giving us different gifts and blessings and allowing us to discover truths about ourselves and our world. We're grateful for communities that embrace and celebrate all that you have created, that embrace and celebrate your children and love them wholeheartedly. We know that there are places where judgment and condemnation make your children feel self-loathing. Places that drive away those who are hurting instead of embracing them. God, we pray that your spirit will stir among them, burning away old prejudices and blowing in a cleansing wind of acceptance. We pray for peace throughout communities, peace within families, peace among nations. Guide us in leaders and voters, legislators and parliaments and judges and juries. Teach diplomacy and let our ways be formed so that we, that all creatures, all plants and people may have enough. You are the light in our darkness. Let your brightness shine in places shrouded in violence and reveal the pains that are hidden in secret. Unveil the needs of our own hearts so that we might know the power of vulnerability and the comfort of trusting in you. We pray for those who are fighting illness and recovering from sickness and we pray for those caregivers who are offering comfort and care. Healer of our every ill. We pray for those who are in need. For refugees of war and all who are displaced by natural disaster. We pray for rescue workers and medical teams. For those who are bone weary from hard work. We pray for those who show us the power of community and give hope to the frightened. And now, God, in silence, we pray for the persons and concerns that lie on our own hearts. God, trusting in your abundant mercy, thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for listening to us now and always. And now, God, hear us as we join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us, speaking it in the language of our hearts. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. God has chosen us, all of us, to walk in wholeness and truth. As God's chosen, we are called to bring healing to a hurting world. One way we do that is to share our gifts, to gather them together so they might be transformed through God's spirit into more than we can imagine, and united to be more than the sum of their parts. 
Through the Holy Spirit, what each of us offers is used by God to change the world. Give what you can with joy and gratitude. Wandering the road of a desperate life Aimless beneath the parent sky Leave it to me Let us pray. Generous God, we offer to you the gifts of our hearts and our hands. Use what we give in ways that spread your love and life throughout our community and world. Multiply our gifts and guide those uh, uses for those so that we can share your message of acceptance to all your children. Amen. Come, gather as, as, as one body at this communion table. 
gather around the table filled with abundance and find the place has been prepared for you. At the table, we are joined not just to those in this room, but to Christians throughout the world, to Christians who have come before and those who will follow. Around the table, we celebrate God's presence as both host and guest of the feast. God invites everyone to eat the bread of life and to drink the cup of hope, to receive grace and love and forgiveness and renewal. Gather close. All God's children have a place, and you are needed at the communion table. Come and partake of the gifts of God, for this is the joyful celebration for all people. Let us pray. Merciful and loving God, we gather at your communion table, grateful for your presence in our lives and delighted by your love. We come knowing that your grace and mercy are extended to all people, but we also know that we have fallen short of your vision for this world, and we repent of, your, of our failure to give us, to give as you have given to us. We beg your mercy for our fallen world and seek our your guidance so that we can live with the faith of Jesus. Help us truly accept your forgiveness and open ourselves to your presence. We give you thanks for the love poured into our world through Jesus who opened our minds to understand your vision for the world. We give thanks for Jesus who brings peace and who creates the faith through the touch and taste. Show us Jesus even now through the mystery of communion, let us encounter him in the broken grains and crushed fruit and know life and hope through him. In his name we pray, amen. Uh, please join our communion song, All Belong Here by the Many. Uh, we will sing with the, this video. When you're not sure who you really are all you feel is the shape of your scars And you have more wounds than you can count Open your eyes, look all around You aren't alone, this is your home Come and remember who you are here Do this to remember who I am
invite you to take out your communion elements. Come and remember who you are here. Come to remember who I am. Come, you belong here. All belong here. There is a, ta- a place for everyone at this table. On the night that Jesus broke the bread, around him were the people that would flee and run. At that table was the one who would betray him. And yet, he invited all of them to partake. On that night, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them and said, take this bread and eat it. Each time you eat it, remember me, remember my body. We take and we eat remembering At the same meal, Jesus took a cup. He blessed it and gave it to them, and he said, drink from it, all of you. All. When you drink this cup, remember the promise that I have made, that I will not drink it again until I drink it anew with you in the kingdom of God. We drink the cup and we remember the promise. Thanks be to God. So today is quarter Sunday for welcome table.
Thanks to everyone who has brought in quarters to support that ministry. If you had forgotten, um, there's the quarters place is still out there. Next week will be quarters Sunday for Heifer International. So now that we have, um, unless there's a fifth Sunday, you have a you have a reason every week to hang on to your quarters and bring them to support the ministry. So. Just a reminder, the first Sunday of the month is always Heifer Quarter Sunday, Heifer International. The second Sunday is for the Clothes Closet. The third Sunday is for DMARC. And the fourth Sunday is for Welcome Table. So always a reason to hang on to those quarters. If you use cash, I don't ever have cash, but I save my quarters when I do. Um, this, the Colors of Hope discussion continues this week. So you do not have to have the book to participate in that discussion. If you would like to gather with other folks to simply reflect on what the sermon was, what you heard in worship today, a personal experience that's important to you that you think would be helpful for all of us, please come and join in that conversation. Again, it's Tuesdays at 6 p.m. This Wednesday at 6.30, is that right? 6.30. Um, double check on that. Um, we will be celebrating inclusion, one month of being an open and affirming congregation. We have lots of sweet things that are going to happen that night, as well as some sweet treats to enjoy. If you'd like to uh, bring in a treat to share, please sign up. Um, so that we know how much stuff is coming. We do have some fun colored popcorn that we'll be enjoying from a local vendor here in Des Moines and snow cones. So those are just a few of the sweet treats to look forward to. And then, um, as I said, next Sunday will be the um, quarter Sunday for Heifer International. There's not as many fruits and vegetables this week, but if you would like, stop by the table. I think there's some peppers, mostly a few tomatoes. Um, there are more tomatoes coming on, but they're just not ripe yet. Yes, Beth? Six o'clock, thank you. So we'll gather at six. Um, we've invited other, um, some other churches to join us to help us celebrate, and we'll go out for the lighting of the bell tower. Thank you to um, Jeff and Jerry, who helped us investigate what the situation was up there. Jerry and I were back here last Wednesday, and we got the lights installed, and we did a little preview to see how they worked, and it is beautiful. Um, so I'm very excited to show all of you and our neighbors um, the, the tower all lit up in color. Any other announcements? Jerry. Okay. All right. Well, we're in prayer for her, and we will uh, we'll make sure that we get that open so her daughter can get clothes, and hopefully she can get clothes. Um, nothing, nothing harder than recovering from a fire when you lose everything. <clears throat> Any other announcements today? Let us stand and sing then our closing song, Blessings on the Road by Dakota Road. Trying to find a way there Every new breath, every next step Keeps us moving along Into the wild and the wonder Of this living sacred song May you find blessings on the road May you find loving hearts to hold May you find peace and shelter Blessings on the road Everyone's journey Everyone's story is new Everyone's yearning For a love that is true Every child 
every family, everyone that I know. We are wandering in the mystery that is dancing in our souls. May you find blessings on the road. May you find loving hearts to hold. May you find peace and shelter. Blessings on the road Blessings on the road Blessings on the road I invite you to receive the benediction. Go now from this place and live into the life and love shown through Jesus. Go now from this place with the Holy Spirit inspiring you to live authentically. Go now from this place shining God's colors of hope. And all God's people said, Amen. Shalom, my friends. Have a blessed week.